Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Thursdev. I'm your host Luke and today I'd like to talk a little bit about one way that you can learn to flex and exercise your game design muscles. Over the course of my career, I've always made it a point to be something of a lifelong learner. I aspire to be the best game designer that I can possibly be, and in the pursuit of that goal, I've explored many, many avenues. There are plenty of books and articles, and even videos like the ones I create for Thursday that can help you to understand the theory of game development. You benefit yourself greatly by absorbing knowledge like this, but only so much can be taught through words alone. The savvy game designer also makes it a point whenever possible to be playing games and analyzing them, and creating games and analyzing their creations. Understanding the underlying rule sets of games that you're playing is a key factor in building up your repertoire of game design tricks and methods, and even though there are still original ideas to be had, generally speaking any design problem that you've run into, someone else has as well, and has come up with at least a solution. Whether it's a good one or not, Having that knowledge as a point of reference is always valuable for when you need to find a solution like that for yourself. I play tons of video games. Action, adventure, platformer, simulation, tactical, management, RPG, roguelike, MMO, quiz, and everything in between. And every time I pick up a game, though I do it for leisure as well, I always do what I can to understand the design decisions made in the games that I'm playing and try to figure out what's going on underneath the hood. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes that's impossible, but I love the exercise of learning game systems, and as a designer, you should as well. But video games shouldn't, however, be the be-all and end-all of what you're analyzing. There's one game design resource out there, a type of game that if you're not actively involved in, you're doing yourself a disservice, and that's role-playing games. Not video game RPGs, which honestly really only share a name, I'm talking about tabletop. Pen and paper, dice, Tom Hanks blundering around in the sewers, you know the ones I'm talking about. When I was a child, and honestly for as long as I can remember, my older brother was always a role-playing geek. Even back when that made you a social pariah, he was ravenous and it seemed to me that if there was a role-playing system that you could get off the shelf of a small town hobby shop, he had a copy and had used me as a guinea pig at least once to try it out. Like many, we got our start with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, 2nd edition, but that quickly blossomed outward to games within universal systems like Palladium with Rifts, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Robotech, White Wolf and their Noun The Other Noun series, GURPS, Fate, and more specialized games like Shadowrun, Eclipse Phase, Paranoia, Cyberpunk, and Human Occupied Landfill, and more. We didn't play everything that was ever made, but we sure as hell tried, and through my comprehensive exposure to these systems, I feel that my brother granted me the tools to become a much better game designer. Tabletop role-playing games are, quite possibly, one of the greatest distillations of game design out there because of their innate requirement of relative simplicity, while still needing to accommodate nearly everything that a game player might wish to do in its setting of choice. The basic conceit of nearly every role-playing game out there is that any action that a human can perform can, with a couple of numbered polyhedrons and a little math, be simulated. The accuracy of the simulation and how complex the algorithms are varies from system to system, but at the end of the day, usually, it's roll one or more dice, add a couple of stats from your character sheet, and you succeed or you fail. Even Shadowrun, a pen and paper game whose character generation is notoriously complex and difficult to get started with ultimately, comes down to rolling a big handful of d6s and counting how many of them turned up a 5 or a 6 and then comparing that against a target number of successes. In a role playing game, anything significantly more convoluted would break the flow of the actual role play, which is akin to a badly tuned negative feedback loop in a video game. But even while maintaining a level of simplicity like that, the game must also account for nearly anything that the player might, in the course of role-playing their character, want to do. This trend of designing to keep things uncomplicated but versatile is a skill that any game designer should strive towards, and adopt even in video game design. If you, in the course of chiseling out a game design, can manage to find an elegant set of algorithms that will cleanly allow you to accomplish half or more of the things that you want to allow your player to do in your game, that's a major win. 
They have a tendency to front load a lot of the complexity of the game in the process of character creation, which is delightfully similar to defining game variables that will be referenced by the game's code in the case of a video game. They define how many of what dice to roll, and if they're well designed, the player will know exactly what to roll and when in order to play their character with as little friction as possible. The best thing of all about the tabletop role playing game though, from a designer that wishes to analyze one, is that all of those complex rules are laid out bare in the pages of the book, free for perusal at any time. Every progression curve, every equation, every rule, written clearly on paper because it has to be. In video games, we frequently attempt to obfuscate our rules and keep players from gaming our systems. Pen and paper games either accept their exploitability and roll with it, or even embrace it like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, or Shadowrun, or in some cases attempt to be modular like Fate, Powered by the Apocalypse, or Rhesus. A knowledge of all of those systems you'll find is extremely valuable to you as a game designer. But the greatest challenge for the designer, and an exercise that I've found to be both rewarding and very useful, is that of designing a role-playing game system yourself. Pen and paper games are limiting. Generally speaking, you have an option of a limited number of dice, or poker chips, or playing cards, and you need to stretch the usefulness of whatever that is as far as humanly possible. No complex simulations, no massive interconnecting matrix of game systems, it's an exercise in stripping away a lot of the unnecessary extra layers and designing simplicity. If you're a game designer or an aspiring one, I urge you to give it a shot. Even if you don't intend to distribute it, it's a great thought experiment at the very least and a lot of fun among friends potentially as well. Find a friend or two that will be willing to troubleshoot your system, get feedback, learn how to make your system sing. The feedback is also instantaneous and pen and paper role playing game design is only a few very narrow degrees removed from paper prototyping a video game, which this will help also immensely with. So check out some role playing games. If video games are your thing and you've somehow managed to get this far in life where you're considering them as a career and you haven't experienced one before, consider giving them a shot. The worst that you can do is not enjoy yourself for a couple of hours. But that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for joining me this week and I hope that you found today's episode entertaining, educational, enlightening, or any combination of those. If you'd like to join our little community of video game and otherwise game enthusiasts who love both the making and playing thereof, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel and get in on the conversation. Do you have a favorite role playing system or tabletop game that you think exemplifies good game design? Let me know. And if you're wanting to get into role playing and just don't happen to have any dice, but you do have an Android device, I've got you covered there too. Search the Google Play Store for Dice by Alexander Hicks, or just follow the link in today's video description. It's a fantastic 3D dice rolling app that's also totally free, made by a good buddy of mine who the Level Zero NPCs all roleplay with every weekend. Anyway, thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you around here again soon. Take care.